Hi everyone, and it's, it's really a pleasure to be here today with IDZ Directions and, and to uh, have the pleasure to present what we consider is going to be one of the future trends, or is, if it's not what we consider a given trend. So we would like to share like uh, what we consider is, is key for CDOs and for people working with data on, on defining a data strategy. I've been working for SDG for more than 10 years, and I'm, I'm a partner leading some of the uh, global clients uh, working for SDG Iberia. So just to introduce, like uh, at the beginning of the year, we came with what we call the given trends. There are two trends specifically that we would like to highlight and, and divide that around four different topics that I will cover in, 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 in the, around the presentation. But before that, like in any other strategy, we need to make sure that every strategy needs to have three things. So normally we say people, process, and technology. On our side, it needs to be key that at the end, people are data driven. So it needs to have that culture change. It's not, it's not going to happen if, if we don't have the data driven mindset. We're going to find challenge. Uh, so we need to change process and, and to get ownerships. And then the agility that will, will come, of course, with the technology. But a, a lot of the things that, I don't know, when we speak with IDC itself or with our customers, when they fail implementing in the past like big data or data transformation projects sometimes like i don't know 70 percent of the times comes because they didn't have the right changes on the organization so when we go through this chapter and, and kind of this next 15 minutes that i would like to share it's, it's kind of an evolution on how we should be driving that new data governance getting that with uh the technology itself so on our side the first topic we would like to, to have is the smart metadata. The smart metadata for us is what we call the heart of data governance is, is kind of key to survive right now, even on, on, on this new world where, I don't know, some people uh, call it the data is the new oil of the economy. That's kind of a, a hype as well, but it's a reality that we're using data all over uh, in, in, in different functions we're starting to to see how we can improve even the, the models that we were having. So when we are talking about the smart metadata, we're talking about kind of the, the same thing we used to do in the past when we were handling metadata uh, management, but bringing into the table new concepts like uh, coming from software engineering and data engineering that is kind of what is giving the smart metadata. So in, in terms of smart metadata, what is key is that we are bringing the data observability. Uh, it's something sometimes that we take from granted in terms of metrics, but analyzing data pipelines downtime, analyzing, I don't know, the, the status of how our data is, how updated it is, and together with, of course, I don't know, the security rules, quality rules, business rules, process it itself, how the ingestion is working, and having the whole lineage on our data. So this first let's say beginning on, on our journey is giving us kind of an industrialization of the process is, is giving a little bit of automation on, on, on what is going to help us drive the data and analytics is going to help us also to bring what we consider is kind of the next stage that there will be a more a data ops approach. And we see it more, a lot of companies right now are talking about like, we want to do the bobs on our new architectures. And now that we're changing or modernizing our architectures, we would like to, to go with new approach. So at the end, this one is, is including, I don't know, of course we need the methodology, we need technologies to support and, and we have a little bit of, of change on, on our side. So just to bring a case, I don't know, in, 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 in this case, one of our customers uh, in, in banking was having this issue in terms of how to analyze, having downtimes of data, not having the data updated. Uh, we went with this approach in terms of smart metadata in, in fact, I don't know, we're seeing that. And uh, sometimes even it's called metadata driven environments where you have portals to handle all the different alerts and, and the system and the technology is helping you drive and, and see what is happening behind your data. And that uh, reference that we were saying, like between 50 to 70% of the time is dedicated to the ETL and the transformation of data is helping really to drive with more agility and reduce the time to go to production with solutions. And, and of course, the ultimate goal to go with the data for uh, making decisions. 
So the next approach and kind of, as we were saying, as we mature in this journey, we get to what we consider the lungs. Like, I don't know that we can live now we we would like to have our own autonomy to breathe and, and have that. That's where the data ops is coming. So data ops at the end, what it's doing is taking the metadata driven approach that we were having before, but also mixing that with agile methodologies like agile from project management that I don't know, like Scrum that uh, normally we're getting used more and more, but also with DevOps coming from software engineering on how we do the, who we were mentioning before the data observability that's directly as an evolution of, of, of the software engineering into the data management world. And then of course, this together with a statistical control processing uh, will help us create this new culture. So it's technology agnostic. It helped us really to create automation, create synergies, eliminate silos inside the company, and, and really to provide end-to-end -end visibility on the data governance. This is one of the frameworks we we kind of encourage to use internally in SDG group when we say, what is our data of framework? So on the bottom, we have, of course, what, what it will be the data layers, the access, how we structure the different layers of data. The one in the middle will be the, that layer that we were discussing before with the smart metadata, where we do monitoring, lineage, alerts, observability, collaboration interfaces, and, and we manage all the data observability, all those uh, rules from business security and quality. And then of course, on top, it comes the data quality that is giving us the perspective on, on that business glossary, the data dictionary, the business lineage on top of our data. So the, the whole data ops comes together with the automation testing, the uh, automation documentation, the uh, I don't know version control monitoring of the whole thing that is coming more with DevOps approach. And it's bringing more like a, what we call data governance by design. So meaning is the technology itself who is helping us bring together uh, the technology. And here at the end, it's, it's not that one technology is that's all. At the end, is is depending on what you are using. I don't know if you're using one uh, hosting or cloud vendor or you're using different best of breed technologies. At the end, is how the combination of all these technologies, you can use it to create this new data ops approach. So the, in, in, in our case, one of the case studies that we have was more with a, a telco, a bit telco in, in Europe. And in this case, one of the issues that we were having was consolidating all the data or having that unique view on the customers. So having this approach that the technology was kind of uh, on, on the same way that we were kind of speeding the way on how data was loaded, how we were finding anomalies and issues in the data, we, we were able to really um, accelerate the whole process of bringing data into the business. The, the last part that at the end is kind of um, what, what we consider is, is kind of becoming the trend and even software companies are bringing this into their capabilities, more like features itself that the, the whole ELT technologies are, or, or the data warehouses technologies are working on embedding that AI component. So, this stage is what we call the data management powered by AI or, or, or data governance powered by AI. And also it follows the same kind of maturity level that normally it, it will follow in a, a business analytics or, or data and analytics itself. So we will go more from descriptive, predictive, and into a prescriptive model. When we start having a data ops environment where we are just finding the alert, finding the monitoring, managing the data lineage, getting all the version control, into getting predictions of where we can get anomalies, where we can get quality issues, where we can get downtime on, on data pipelines, and going into a more prescriptive where we will be sending recommendations on changes based on what we are seeing. And at the end also, this comes with integration of new sources, uh, how the even kind of the omni-channel experience, for example, on the marketing side is evolving on handling all those social media data and kind of creating that synchronized uh, way for a customer to interact with our data. So this will be like the, the latest version on what we see in terms of uh, working with the data governance environment in a more collaborative uh, model. Right now, we, I don't know, we're we seeing more things between descriptive and, and predictive. There are really few implementations right now moving into a more predictive environment, but we are seeing that more like a case by case, department by department that are getting into data ops uh, predictive. In, 
in this case, at the end, what it what it does is applying kind of on all that those different sources, the volume that we're having, creating, uh, applying those rules on data quality, data observability for for the data pipelines, applying AI on the bobs in terms of moving from environment to the other, automation on how we do things, on testing. Uh, I don't know, like uh, GXP environments or or things that need to be tracked completely down to the the row level, and of course on data catalogs. That right now there are even softwares where you connect and automatically you get the whole data catalog just by getting the logs. So it's kind of the evolution on on what we are seeing uh, here. In terms of solutions, it's one of the things also that we're seeing that I was mentioning before is it goes department by department. Um, we're seeing this, for example, I don't know, there is another, apart from this case, an, another case where we're seeing in the CPG, where the team is improving algorithms that in the past was just a, a normal uh, model and KPI just kind of uh, uh, calculating the customer lifetime value, whereas now you can interact more with the data and bring new uh, capabilities in order to calculate more sophisticated models using AI in terms of the whole data pipeline. So. With this one, the last piece that I will kind of include and, and close the loop will be the unique inter-cloud uh, uh, approach. So meaning at the end, if if we are kind of, or or what we say internally has a trend is the cloud is now a must. Like, I don't know, every software company, all the companies are moving into the cloud. And on, on my personal side that, I, I don't know, we were suffering like even moving from one desktop to the other or laptops. Now being on the cloud, you can change from laptop to the other in just five minutes, just by synchronizing your Google, your Microsoft, your Amazon environments and opening them in, in the new cloud. So when we are talking with the inter-cloud at the end, it's more like how we get the benefit of all the cloud hosting and we don't get the mistake of paying, getting kind of locked down on one a specific cloud. So this is more something that we recommend to look in. It's not just about getting married with one cloud and then everything with that cloud and, and we need to do it everything with that vendor is more taking the capabilities on what are the things that one company can bring me into the table like where has is machine learning ops or is the algorithms that they have or in this other side is the compute the the, the storage of the data and having those approaches on more hybrid cloud and inter-cloud and even reducing latencies between regions i don't know for example in asia we can have a better uh, service, for example, with Alibaba, but in in US we can use Amazon Web Service, and then in in Europe we could be using Microsoft. So at the end, is creating those uh, new trend that in terms of data is being called data mesh, creating those inter clouds internally and synchronizing all all the different clouds and different data uh, repositories in in terms of um, the company. So this reduce the the cost of course it, it creates um uh, reduce also the technical gap that we can have in terms of you not know, having all the functionality in one place and, and giving us the opportunity to really to work more on, on on a whole environment where we get the best of the best from every other company so from from this is it's kind of a quick intro on what we consider, what are the trends in the market that we would like to share and, and, and you to get it. But at the end is the question is, are we taking the right steps in order to do this? When we have the conversation with our customers, they are kind of something that we see on the agenda on, on everyone. I would be happy like without any compromise, if you need further detail, just contact me and uh, I can give you quick uh, things or advice on, on how we are doing on how we can help you. So thank you very much. And it was a pleasure to, to participate in IDC Directions.